welcome back to the Justinian Deception. Just want to do a quick little video, a follow on from the uh, New South Wales uh, styles manual, the things I gave you in the last video. I have a book here, Ross on Crime. It's an Australian book and it has all the precedents uh, for Australian law. Very good book, I can highly recommend it. I just want to read you this section, it's on uh, page 443, it's chapter 3.8620, Not to be learned tricksters is the heading. So it talks about what the Bar Association uh, is doing, basically. The Bar, British Accreditation Regency. It means that all lawyers, even in the US, pledge allegiance to Britain and are under the rules of the Queen. The Queen is a foreign power. So I want to read you this out of the Bar Association, about the Bar Association. The members of the Bar Association will always be competitors, but I do not doubt that in the future the Bar will be as punctilious as ever in manners of this kind. The reason that the Bar exists as a Bar and that they stand as they do stand, a privileged class with certain rights and obligations, is that they are believed to be and expected to be honourable men. And if instead of being honourable men, anxious for honest, clean justice in the court, that they should cease to be that and become merely learned tricksters, the bar would not be in existence for very long. They would be no benefit or service to the public, but their learning would be dangerous and their tricks would be a never failing source of trouble to the community. Now this is in a case called Swinburne and David Syme and Co, 1909 VLR 550 brackets FC, Madden Chief Justice said at 570 to 571, which was a quote I just read you. So guys, that's what the courts think about the bar. Now the bar have become learned tricksters. The Bar Association have, even the International Criminal Court has an International Criminal Court Bar Association. So they, they are operating every bar and this is where the, all cap, the full capitals comes in because they're offering you it's almost like an option to hear the matter privately. Now I just want to show you in New South Wales something else we've found, um, other than the, the Chicago Styles Manual is actually the official manual for the New South Wales Bar Association, you can look that up on their website. Just on the computer here, this is the uh, Interpretations Act 1987 number 15, New South Wales legislation. So 45E, style changes, Roman numerals, columns and dashes, section 1D, so if you're going to write out legislation, this is giving you the the way to do it. And it says, you can write legislation with other changes to the format, but not to the text. So that's the important part of the legislation, so as to conform to the current style of the state. So the state being New South Wales or the administrator NSW. So we wanted, I just went and wanted to find what the style of the state was. And that wasn't hard to do. So if we go here, this is the Australian Government Digital Style Guide, official website. You can look it up yourself. So if we go down here to capitalization, capital letters are hard to read, keep them to a minimum. Use sentence case for most things. Capitalize the first word. So when they say capitalize, that is one capital letter. Full capitals is different to capitalize. Use title case for proper nouns. Capitalize the principal words. And if we go down further to nouns, use title case for proper noun. So title case, one capital letter again. For example, names of people, places or organisations. Now this is a New South Wales style. This is the act telling you if you're going to write anything about the legislation that you would use that style which is one capital letter. So we, once again we're asking the question why are we using the all capital letters? So even this, this is the Australian Government Official Styles Manual, I've spoken about this previously, page 121 says exactly what that style set, it tells you one capital letter. Um, and the, all the documents, so this is for writing legislation. So if you're writing legislation, well any document, say a driver's license or a court document, anything coming from that legislation would have to be in the same style, otherwise you would lose the jurisdiction between it. And this is, Rom spoken about this previously. Um, one of the obvious limitations of the use of glosses from the spoken written language to represent signs is there is no one-to-one -one correspondence between the words or signs in any two languages. Once again guys, Chicago Styles Manual, page 666. So, 
the question I guess we need to answer, and I have actually made complaints about this to the Attorney General and New South Wales Police, is that there is actually a legislative requirement to be doing this, and they're not even doing it with their own their own documents. So this is where the fraud comes in. This is where the bar association is going is going to become a group of learned tricksters. I have, in sincerity, pledged myself to your service as so many of you are pledged to mine. Throughout all my life and with all my heart, I shall strive to be worthy of your trust. I just wanted to show you 45E guys and I uh, hope you enjoy it and thanks for all the comments. Rom and I really do appreciate everything you've been doing and thanks Rom for being my cameraman. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, see you on the next video. Conclusion. The Queen agreed to act as the first trustee. The Queen, through the deceptions of the bar and her deceptive legal system, converted you from the trustor of the Queen into the trustee of the Queen without compensation. Voluntary servitude is the agreement to become a slave without compensation. If you have become a slave without ever knowing you were a slave, could this mean that you have been deceived? If slave names and military names appear in all uppercase text, could this mean that your driver license is confirmation that you are nothing but a slave or a military subordinate to the Queen's administrative corporations?